The ancient Greek philosopher Aristotle was quoted once saying, man is, by nature, a social animal. An individual who is unsocial naturally and not accidentally is either beneath our notice or more than human. Society is something that precedes the individual. What he meant by this has had various interpretations over time, but one thing most can agree with is that humans can't survive on their own and will naturally seek companionship from others in order to thrive. This rule, however, has its exceptions. One of those exceptions being groups of degenerates who, when they gather in significant numbers in one location, invite more risk to themselves than safety. It's been my experience making the content that I do and exploring the places on the internet that I have, more often than not, the reason I discover these places is a result of degenerates forming in too great of numbers in one location. It's almost like my own personal law of the internet. Degeneracy in numbers leads to discovery by numbers, one which has repeated itself time and time again. Now, I had stated in the previous episode that there are a fair few names to bring forward from the necrophile server. While not all of them hold weight, there are a handful of names that some people may recognize. Some of these people only have a few dozen or a few hundred followers who pay them any mind, but others here have several thousand. That said, I'm not here to make a distinction on who's better or worse based on numbers. All I'm here to do is show you the information and provide my interpretation of it. In the end, it's up to you to decide who you think the most vile of the list is. Speaking of the most vile of the list, I'm sure many in this server, once they're actually revealed to the public, are going to try to argue that they didn't post very much, if at all, in the server, to which my argument back would be the following. That would be correct. Not everyone in that server was an active user. Not everyone in that server posted or created content like this highly regularly or at all. However, every one of them was in that server, and every one of the things that I was able to archive was available to be seen from just joining the server, which means every user in that server was well aware of what was going on in there at some point or another, and they made the conscious choice to not leave the server or better yet, blow the whistle. The way that I see it is that they may not have created the content, but they enabled its creation and they enabled it to continue to be shared and spread throughout that server and throughout that community. So please, dear viewer, don't let them or myself deter you from making whatever judgments you feel are appropriate. And you've probably noticed by now, this video is stylistically much different from many of my other ones. This is not an oversight, and it's not due to me being lazy with the editing. The fact is, even though all of this information was willingly disclosed by the people in this server, I am not putting any visual information about them on screen. In the past, I've had plenty of degenerates try to abuse the flagging system and the copyright system to censor the truth. To avoid having that happen, what I've gone ahead and done is linked a Google Doc in the description, one that was created by Rouge Moonbat, that contains all of the information I'll share in this video, with appropriate links and disclaimers. With that out of the way, let's begin. We'll begin with Executioner, aka Psycho333, a member of the server and one who seems to have little footprints I'm able to track personally. Aside from them being the person who owned the account harassing Shiloh Connor on Twitter, there's not much to say about them on other platforms. All any of us were able to conclude from this deep dive was that they evidently go by the name Jesse McMahon. None of us could confirm if this is simply a pseudonym, their real name, or the name of somebody else entirely, so before you light up any torches and try to hunt down anyone using the name Jesse McMahon, bear in mind there's no guarantee this is their real name. After that, we have a user named Amethyst, and this one seems to have a significant trail we can follow. They run a DeviantArt account under the username of Aaron Amethyst, where they upload embarrassingly bad artwork and even worse fanfiction, revolving predominantly around My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, to an audience of anywhere between 500 to 600 brain-dead viewers. They also have a furry network account by the same name, which seems to have been inactive for years. Evidently, they list their home as 4chan and New York City which seems to make sense considering both locations tend to specialize in building up excessive amounts of garbage and churning out toxic sludge into any runoffs they're adjacent to. That said, that information is potentially outdated due to their inactivity on Furry Network, where it's listed, but fortunately they've 
updated their location on Discord to specify they are potentially in Indiana. Moving right along, we have our good friend Balgius. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I don't fucking care either. This person's degenerate. I'm not going to do the courtesy. They're the proud owner of a dead YouTube channel with 17 subscribers. On the side, they have a deeply concerning page on F-List that makes me wonder if they're getting psychiatric help, because in my humble opinion, they desperately need it. And a fur affinity page that shows they have a large fixation on gore, vor, and crushing. Oh my. Working our way right down the list, we have Demetris Ars. Don't know if that's, uh, that's correct, if I'm pronouncing that right, if it's like a pirate thing. Arr. Either way, moving on. The server's local Russian, brought to us right out of Moscow. They have a small Twitter presence where they mostly retweet people worth a shit, which I like to imagine he does to pretend he's worth something too, as he lives vicariously through the accomplishments of others. He is also the proud owner of one of the most boring fur affinity pages I've seen in my life, posting only commissions he gets from others and favoriting either edgy pieces of art of random personas, or what typically looks like two anthro characters blowing each other. An interesting thing to note as well is that he's also on Furry Amino, which most in the fandom know is a place that is meant to be a safe place for the younger members of the fandom, but hey, a 33-year-old necrophile isn't too much of a risk, right? I'm sure you all are going to be happy to let that guy stay there. Then we have Dreamclaw. Much like Demetrius, his Twitter account gives few details, however, his fur affinity page is... Well, I really can't describe it to you in any way that would be appropriate for this platform, but let's just say his favorites fall past not safe for work and into the category of not safe for life. Weirdly enough, though, his DeviantArt account appears to be largely benign, but if you'd like to give Dreamclaw, aka Harvard, a call to ask him a few things yourself, his Skype name is in the document listed below. Give him a call. Now, Hattie89 is something of a ghost, having a Twitter account where he hasn't tweeted in over a decade, but there is a possible LinkedIn page we were able to find for those feeling particularly adventurous. Who knows? Maybe his employer would like to know what he's been up to. Then we have Max Neon, a cute little Twitter furry that likes to go out fursuiting when they aren't discussing the finer points of necrophilic artwork. They come from the UK, they're 24, so if anyone is looking for the degenerate of their dreams, maybe you can give her a call? Now, this one is a particularly interesting member of the bunch. They go by the name Nopalopolis. Not Nopalopolis? Nopalopolis. Eat asparagus. I don't give a shit. This name's fucking annoying. Why did you choose such a stupid fucking name? It looks like you had a seizure while writing it. Well, I'll just refer to it as Helena, as that's what this creature prefers to be called. And they are 27 years old, and they live in Texas, apparently. It has a small Twitter presence, a Steam profile, and is probably playing Amorous while you watch this video. If you're wondering why I'm throwing around various pronouns at this creature and calling it this creature, it's because after the conversation that I had with this creature in the Senate, I don't really consider it to be human, I think it's something more akin to a mythological creature or an urban legend, like Bigfoot or the creature from the Black Lagoon. Which brings us right along to Commander Dupe, who has a Twitch channel that may be the most perplexing thing I've seen. You know, seeing as it's named Minecraft Lover 2212 but he claims to stream Dead by Daylight to keep all three of his followers riveted. Well, he also does have his Steam profile attached, and while I joked about the last user potentially playing Amorous, this man actually has, uh, yeah, he has, um, his 33 hours logged on Amorous at the time of this recording. <laughs> I don't, um, I, I don't actually have a... I don't have a joke for that's that's just get a girlfriend dude now our next degenerate is uncanny hum now just going off of his fur affinity account and deviantart account one would never assume somebody like this was actually into something like necrophilia but much like many serial killers out there it's the most unassuming among us who turn out to be the most depraved because as you'll soon see when we actually dive full on into the server he was one of the most active members in most of these chats. I suppose he certainly does live up to that uncanny name. Now, as much as I don't like to do this to all of you, we're gonna have to split this episode into two parts. 
The reason for that being that there's still 13 names left to go on this particular list that we have to explore, at least in somewhat of detail. That said, I will still be posting the list of all of the server members in the description of this video. That way, even if you don't want to wait for the next video, or if you want to just see if any of these people happen to be in any of your servers, or servers you frequent, you'll still have access to all of that information, and you'll be able to have them removed if you think that that is necessary. For now, I do hope you've enjoyed this video, and I do hope to see you in the next one. You have yourselves a wonderful day, and I will catch you guys later.